can I use a layer three or multiple IP subnets for a vSAN cluster? So yes, you can. And there's actually kind of two things to unpack this question. There's uh, using multiple VM kernel ports and multiple networks on each host, um, which is a very much kind of a corner case configuration. We don't see very often. Um, there are some kind of quirks to it. You, you can't run HDI mesh. Um, it's generally for people who are still trying to mirror old AB fiber channel networks and operations. Um, most people instead just use path failover or even LACP um, instead for that. Then there's also the construct of having different hosts within a cluster in different subnets and on different broadcast domains, which is actually much more common. Um, the latter, where what's going to drive this more often than not is if I've got a cluster that's spanning multiple racks, uh, the kind of new um, networking beliefs in the data center that we don't just let layer two roam everywhere. It can cause spanning tree problems. Um, if there's problems with the subnet or a VLAN gets uh, inappropriately removed, now we've crashed multiple racks of environments. So in our desire to split up our fault domains by putting different servers in racks, we're also splitting up fault domains and, and limiting kind of the proliferation of this. In previous releases of vSAN, this could be more difficult. Uh, back when we leveraged multicast for metadata updates, but since we've got rid of, uh, rid of that as of uh, vSAN 6.6, um, this is there's a lot less complexity to this. You do need to make sure you know you've got your gateways and things like that set up. Um, but this is something to where you can there's an option actually you can check a box and say override default gateway and assign those gateways. You'll actually find that within the VM kernel configuration mm -hmm. uh, to help with that. One really common use case for, by the way, doing this layer three topology is stretch clusters. Um, a key goal of stretch clusters is to have it to where if something fails at the primary site, the secondary site can take over. And having a subnet that spans both, if you have some type of port flapping issue on an unreliable WAN device, you don't necessarily want spanning tree reconvergence to crash both sides. Because uh, in that case, you've built out this highly resilient system. And then because of the nature of its scale, it's actually become more fragile. <laughs> so let's... That's actually an environment where I really, really prefer to lean into layer three specific configurations um, and do that. And some people may be concerned and say, well, routing slows things down or routing is performance. Well, okay, if, yes, if you have some ancient Cisco ISR 1801, you are correct. Um, but modern high speed switches, if I've got some, you know, Aristas or some Nexus 9K top rack data center class switches, these devices are designed to route, uh, do static and dynamic routing um, at wire speed. It's it's really no sweat on those ASICs to handle this. They're not having to do any type of manual inspection of every single packet coming through um, through a route process or anything like that. They've they've developed ways to do this at very high speed. Um, but do pay attention to what those layer do pay attention to all the hops in that path. Um, you know, if people want to put some because they're using. Um, dark fiber, they want to put some um, uh, wave division multiplexing gear, um, you know, that's great. Um, common thing to split out lambdas or split out that dark fiber into multiple connections. Um, those are low latency, those are fine. If people want to put a pair of uh, firewalls or IDS engines or load balancers, uh, that is not supported and a bad idea. Um, those devices will interject latency. They will also um, randomly decide to stop packets, which does very bad things to storage when you try to send a write and it fails and you don't know why because the network decided to eat it because it thought it was an evil packet. Um, this is this is a real problem. So do talk to your networking people. Do find out, okay, if, I've, if I'm stretching between these sites, is this over some sketchy 10 meg VPN link or do I have 10 gig with high speed data center class devices end to end? Okay, you know, one of these, yes, one of these, you know, obviously no.